I would say that this is the most excited that I've been in the industry. Internationally, we're seeing a movement towards regulating this space. Us together, um, yeah, I think as you hear, we're, we're very excited about, about this collaboration. Today, I interviewed two of the leaders in the cryptocurrency space. Alan Silbert, CEO of North America at INX, which is a crypto broker, also partner of the channel, and Andrew Dergy, the head of Republic Crypto. Two companies that just made a major strategic partnership. Check the timestamps down below. Let's talk about what all this means for you. And let's start. How about with Alan? What's your background, Alan? I was a commercial banker in my prior life. So about 20 years, I worked for Merrill Lynch Capital, GE Capital, and Capital One Bank, did, doing uh, middle, middle market lending, venture debt lending uh, for regulated companies. I uh, got into crypto in about 2013. So I've been in the space for about 10 years. Um, yeah, I mean, the transition and kind of the funny story is, uh, I'd launched a Bitcoin marketplace for luxury goods called Bit Premier. That was kind of like me dipping my toe in the water in the space. And, uh, that we, we sold a, a, uh, villa in Bali, I think when Bitcoin was $600, a uh, Bitcoin 2013, um, but, you know, I gained a Twitter following and uh, one day Jamie Dimon said something about Bitcoin and uh, when I was at Capital One Bank and I, I tweeted about it and um, the Fortune magazine put my tweet it's kind of the center of, of a Fortune magazine article like Alan Silver of Capital One Bank said this about Jamie Dimon. And so Capital One Bank was not amused. And uh, the next morning, I had a meeting with uh, Human Resources, Public Relations, uh, and they were like, you can never speak about crypto ever again in any forum because you'd be seen as a spokesperson for the bank. So I kind of took that as my hint and my push into the space. And coincidentally, I met Shai Datika, the founder of INX, within like the same two-week period. So it all seemed like the planets were aligning for me. And this was my way to, to uh, you know, use my regulated experience, my crypto experience, and, and build a platform uh, the way it should be built. And just to clue everybody in, what is INX? So INX is both a crypto trading platform, a security token trading platform, and also a primary issuance platform for security tokens. So over the last five years, we, you know, we've built a, a 24-7, 365 trading platform. Uh, on the cryptocurrency side, we trade Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, stable coins. And on the security token side, we, we trade uh, security tokens that have gone through the, the correct uh, security path with the SEC, which is what you hear on the news these days the, that the SEC is squawking about. It's people not going the direct the, the right path. So um, we wanted to, uh, you know, talk the talk, walk the walk. And so we ourselves did an INX token IPO with the SEC. It took three years to get us through. We we're the first one ever cleared by the SEC. And uh, we have almost 10,000 token holders now. They get a sh uh, cut of our net profits and, and other rights. And, um, and yeah, so and, and we met uh, Kindred Spirits in Republic. I'll let Andrew speak about what Republic does. But, uh, yeah, the two companies together are, are really interesting, uh, compelling uh, puzzle piece that matches together extremely well. Uh, so, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew, I think most of the guys, everybody saw the partnership on Twitter. But before that, uh, what's your background? And then also, what's Republic? Yeah, and I've never heard the Capital One Jamie Diamond story. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a good, it's a good one. That's so good. Oh, man. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So I've been in the space for over 13 years. Um, engineer, I was CEO and co-founder of a company called The Coin Tree. We we're the first doing multi-sig security and storage for Bitcoin 2011, 2012, 2011, 2012, 2013. If you're around, you used us. We were the only game in town. I was in the hedge fund space after that, running due diligence and fundamental analysis engineering teams, uh, uh, most for hedge funds, most of which is crypto specific. Became a partner at TLDR Capital, which was the number one ICO advisory firm globally, 2016, 17, 18. Everything ran through us back then. And I joined Republic in early 2019 um, to build out what was meant to be the first vertically integrated crypto investment bank. And we finished that full integration early, early last year. And now we're going through this larger digital merchant bank evolution. And, and INX is like a cornerstone of that of that that movement. So uh, most people know Republic as being the largest private primary issuance platform in the world. Uh, we have over 2,000 portfolio companies or nearly 2,000 portfolio companies that have run through that. Uh, but uh, there's an, an entire other layer, which is our crypto layer. And so uh, the crypto business is what I built 
like six or seven products and services that sit under there. We're known for our advisory arm. We have a Web3 native and an enterprise advisory arm. Uh, we uh, are the largest tokenization platform globally, where we will physically build the token uh, for other people. Architect, design, build, test, deploy, audit, distribute, a full token ecosystem. Um, we do that with Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies, uh, big enterprise level projects. Uh, we have our token sale platform. We have wallet products, which launched this this uh, this month and in treasury management services and a series of funds. That's that whole vertically integrated crypto investment banking stack. You need each one of those pieces, right? Um, and so now our partnership with INX adds a, the, the basically the, the cherry on top of that that chocolate fudge sundae, uh, which is secondary markets and uh, and trading uh, um, uh, trading facilities. So we're extremely excited about that relationship. Cool. So yeah, go go into that a little more. How does this change things? Maybe you, Alan, with INX, it's just that the projects that are already under the Republic realm they they now have a secondary market through INX. Or what else? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's and if there's a lot of cross pollination and integrations happening here. So yeah, you like on our side, we um, you know we have the primary raises and we have the security token trading on Republic side. They have almost three million users on their platform. So they, you know they bring distribution. You know we bring the the regulated broker dealer license and platform and trading. Um, you know there's different integrations like the Republic wallet that can be integrated as well. Which uh, which is a proprietary wallet which they built, um, and yeah, it's like what Andrew said before. You, you hear like there's a lot of different pieces here, so we're 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 really with us together. We're we're going to cover a lot of different bases, you know, with tokenization, with wallets, with issuance, with trading. Uh, we have a licensed transfer agent license. We have an FX trading desk. So you we're you really have a lot of different uh, pieces here that have been built in the right way. Um, you know, I was speaking uh, on our AMA uh, just an hour ago about, you know, you kind of see what's happened in the last year. You know, it's been like a, a, a total collapse of many different companies. And uh, what we saw in Republic, what I think they see in us is is a company that really built things right from from scratch. And that's why we're both sitting here right now. And um and uh, you know we're we're not we're not in trouble, and you know we're we sleep well at night, and and we're just here building and and collaborating, which is you know what you do in these kind of markets right now. Although, yeah, the the news over the last week and stuff, you have all these total ginormous players uh, jumping into Bitcoin ETFs and stuff. So this uh, the crypto winter might very quickly kind of come to an end here because these uh, so I see this as an incredibly kind of bullish narrative, especially in the current market. And uh. Alan, can you talk about some of the growth metrics you've seen at INX? For example, I remember when FTX collapsed, we saw all this all these users head over to Binance and head over to Coinbase. Now, obviously, the SEC is on the next rung, and they're going after these guys that maybe pushed a little too fast. Have you seen an incredible amount of growth? Yeah, we've we've uh, we've definitely seen a material growth, uh, especially in the last couple of months in in users and volume and and inbound inquiries and stuff. I think. Um, it's it the crypto winter is just starting to thaw and people got scared to take everything off the exchange platforms and so now they're 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 starting to thaw a little bit um but also kind of like the beauty of our security token trading platform is it's non custodial so it's not your keys not your coins kind of thing we, we don't we don't touch the the, the uh, security tokens they go from buyer to seller out of buyer and so um you know i think that gives people a great amount of comfort that you know they can control their own destiny um but uh, but yeah, it's we're having you know discussions with a lot of different players in the space. We we our our standing and our licenses and everything else has suddenly become very very prominent in in the current environment. Andrew, what's your take on the current regular regulatory status of crypto in the U.S. and what are you most excited for looking forward? We're extremely close to the regulatory rail. Uh, I testified in front of Congress uh, four or five weeks ago uh, in a dual committee hearing, which is particularly rare uh, with the, uh, the Agriculture Committee and the Financial Services Committee. And uh, my written testimony from that hearing has become kind of a foundationary component of the markets bill, which is being pushed by McHenry's office. Um so when we look at the regulatory frameworks of the U.S., this is the first time that we've really seen the U.S. start to approach potentially looking how to regulate this space holistically within the U.S. 
Um, I think regulators themselves have either struggled or failed in certain areas. And now the legislators themselves are become are that are adding a lot of pressure to get this determined. If you look at what's happening internationally with Mika, which is the uh, Markets and Crypto Act out of Europe, or if you saw what happened yesterday in the House of Lords in the UK uh, with them moving forward on crypto regulations, internationally we're seeing a movement towards regulating this space. The UK one is particularly poignant because London is a finan- a global financial center. And almost certainly London is going to beat the US to regulatory frameworks as it relates to digital assets. And that will create a lot of headwinds uh, in the US side um, to be counterculture to that, right? So if if all of a sudden London rolls out these frameworks that become internationally accepted, they're connected to every international major financial institution in the world, the United States is now going to be second fiddle to that particular regulatory framework. And as we roll out our regulatory frameworks, we now have to very much look at the other international regulatory frameworks in order for our framework to even work. If it's too disjointed, right? If the US rolls out their framework and it's heavily disjointed from the UK framework, that will just create additional friction and complexities and gray areas at which everyone here is looking for clarity. So I think the US finds itself in a really unique seat because there's going to be a lot of external pressures now coming from external markets as they roll out the regulatory frameworks. And now legislators in the US are going to have to digest that and identify how best to build a homogenous relationship between those frameworks and ours. It's coming, right? Like I, I always say, if you believe that digital assets are here to stay, and obviously Republican INX very much feel that way, um, that's just time, right? It's a matter of time before we have the people in place that can can put the right frameworks in place so the United States can continue progressing with the rest of the of, of the world. So we're extremely excited. I know regulatory wise, there's been um, some suits and things that have happened that have uh, you know cast a bad light in some areas of the space uh, recently. But the the markets bill that's coming, I think, is an extremely strong indicator that the United States knows that it has to take action and they can't be asleep at the wheel anymore. What is the biggest opportunity at INX uh, in the future? Meaning, is it security token offerings of of stocks that already exist on the Web2 world? Is it tokenized real estate? Like, how do you see this regulated world unfolding? Yeah, I mean, kind of the beauty of, uh, of the token space, kind of like the sky's the limit. Um, yeah, uh, there's real world asset tokenization, you know, it's certainly a thing. You know, you can tokenize real estate, art, whatever. Um, it's uh it doesn't doesn't trade as much as as some other kind of potential tokens but um you know i mean really one of the best opportunities i see are really uh issuers that have a captive community already so like in the past we've had like for instance like a premier league soccer team approached us you know they have a captive fan base of course they wanted to you know tokenize uh, game day revenues and merch revenues and then give their fans a cut you know so that, I mean, for us, I think that's the, one of the biggest opportunities because it comes with a captive distribution network, a captive, you know, uh, an audience that's, you know, they're all aboard, um, you know, depending on kind of the company, they might be already very knowledgeable about tokens and stuff. So you don't have an education hurdle, but I mean, the, the kind of these community-based tokens or fan-based tokens are one of the bigger things that I see, but it is also... You know, you can you can package up a, an equity and you can put it into a token and then you could trade it 24, 7, 365 and fractionalize it down to small amounts for people. You know, there's, there's really the sky's the limit. Uh, I think go go on and on. I, I want to pose this question to both of you a little open ended. But what do you wish more crypto investors understood about either your relationship together or just like the space going forward as we see it evolve? What well, do I... yeah, I mean, I think us us together, um, yeah, I think as you hear, we're we're very excited about about this collaboration um, and what it means. And I think that you know we've both built things very deliberately in the last several years to um, to meet the challenges of today and um, and and what the market's looking for, the regulators looking for, and so um, so yeah, I think. Um, you know, I think it's a, very, it's a very exciting partnership and, and uh, you know, I look forward to what it, what it means for both of us. As we look at the space leading up to this, uh, in order to participate in the security token space, and even like utility tokens to some degree, you had to 
use multiple vendors, right? You needed you know, multiple different types of walls, depending on the asset that you're using, different custodians, depending on what custodians supported, what types of assets, different exchanges supported different. And so again, you have this very discombobulated, disjointed space. It's very, very difficult to use. Like if you wanted to buy this coconut water, if you had to go work with six different vendors to do it, you'd never drink coconut water, right? Like it just wouldn't happen. So, you know, we're starting to now see the infrastructure in place and some clear frameworks in place and um, and reporting in place that these things are now all becoming integrated, right? You can come to Republic. We provide primary issuance. We provide tokenization. We provide uh, institutional custodial solutions, non-custodial multi-asset wallet products, and now secondary market liquidity and trading options all within one platform, one integrated platform. And you don't have to now go work with multiple vendors and multiple wallets and multiple uh, partners that can all sit in one place. You don't have to be Web3 native, right? Everything uh, is has a very Web2 experience with the Web3 layers now as an infrastructure you know, under underneath. And so I think when we're looking at investors or just anyone that's looking to participate in the space where it's been either daunting or overwhelming or just cumbersome, we're chopping all those layers down and making a very streamlined process of which anyone can participate in. And that has always been the core ethos as a, uh, for Republic, which is to democratize finance. I can understand if you guys don't want to answer this, but just an honest question for me. Do you see an exchange like Binance being here in 10 years? Because they're oh, the total I'm, opposite I'm, of Binance. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to answer this question. Yeah, I have no problem. <laughs> um, I think Binance will be here, but in a different form. I think the future of exchanges, there's going to be two paths. Um, there's going to be fully regulated, bank-style, KYC, AML types of exchanges, like what we have with the partnership with Republic and INX, or maybe what just Citadel just launched. Like Those types of exchanges will be one side of the fence. The other side of the fence will be full DeFi exchanges, true DeFi exchanges with some level of nefarious actor, like bad wallet check, right? And those will be the two places that ex ex that exchange commerce will take place. Everything in the middle will be gray area and will be very high risk. So it doesn't mean that they, you know, those exchanges don't exist in, in you know, later on, but they will be very difficult to operate with on board and off board with. Um, and the other two are, will be the kind of the prime, primary pillars. So I think a lot of the exchanges that we know now, a lot of the international exchanges will move closer to one of those directions over time. And I think that's just going to be the, the natural state of things. But almost every regulatory framework in every jurisdiction is is pushing in those two directions. Yep, I would 110% agree with this. This is, this is the direction it's going to go. I so, get... you know, Binance, I guess, you know, I mean, they're, they're going to be backed into a corner that, you know, it's, they can either withdraw and try to go into the shadows and be a total DeFi exchange or, you know, or they'll they'll uh, acquiesce and, and become regulated and, you know, what that entails. I want to thank you guys for sharing your time for the audience, all the links for you guys personally, as well as the companies down below. Check them out. But just final thoughts for the Altcoin Daily audience, starting with Alan. Yeah, I, I, thanks for having us on. I, it's uh, it is, for INX. This is a very important milestone in our history. It's one of the most exciting things I think um, that we've we've come across in the last couple of years. And we we were, you know, uh, very happy to to meet up with our public guys over weeks and many many meetings, getting to know each other. Um, you know, we're going to be a very important player as a collaborating uh, company under a huge umbrella going forward. And um, yeah, we, we look forward to, to what we can accomplish together. And uh, I would say that this is the most excited that I've been in the industry. And, you know, again, I've been here for 13 years. I've, I've, I've tasted every winter along that path. And uh, while there we have been, the industry has been knocked down a number of times by bad actors in the, you know, the last couple of years. This is the first time that we're starting to see real fundamental change at a government jurisdictional level. And this opens up the opportunities for everybody, right? It doesn't matter where you sit in the stack. Now everyone will have the ability to participate in an international financial framework um, that gives opportunity 
to move between classes, to move between jurisdictions. And I, I this has always been kind of the mission of Republic, and we, we are actually seeing it happen live, real time right now. Uh, and I, I could not be happier to be on this journey with INX, our core component of this. We could not do it without them. Uh, and the the relationship between those two entities is is has really gone beyond something that's strictly corporate and is now a true friendship. And I'm really excited by that. And by the way, while I have you here, real quick, what's on the roadmap for the rest of this year for Republic for INX? I would say first and foremost is integrating the Republic wallet and INX is our top priority. That uh, you know, as we talk about kind of friction points within the industry, that's that's a, a very very important component. Um, to removing kind of that cumbersome friction forward experience. So I'd say top of the list for us is, is the rollout of our wallet, which happens this month, and then the direct integration of that wallet into, into the INX platform. Yeah, I, I, from our side, yeah, I, I see, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of things going on, but I think that the, the Republic collaboration um, is, is my priority for sure. And, and what that entails, um, yeah, also the issuance platform, you know, what, what Republic has on their platform and what we can tokenize um, and uh, and trade on ours. Uh, you know, we'll we'll go through and, and uh, curate uh, the different deals, what makes sense for tokenization. Um, you know, I know Republic wants to move more and more into token tokenization Web3 for their offerings going into the next year or two. And so, um, yeah, and the wallet integration is, is very exciting for me as well. So I look forward to that. 